Hey, this is Anthony with Revzilla TV, where you can watch, decide, and ride. Welcome to our detailed breakdown of the new Schubert C3 Pro modular helmet, available at Revzilla.com. So in this video, we're going to walk through all of the key pieces as well as the nuance, but really many of the improvements on the new C3 Pro modular from Schuberth. If you remember the original C3, which I have to my left here in this black version, this, is, this was the most quiet, lightweight, and aerodynamic modular helmet in the world until the C3 Pro came out. In many categories, in over 20 different elements of this helmet, Schubert has taken a pass at them, listened to the feedback from so many of their fan base, so, much, so many of the riders around the world for the last you know, almost decade, and they've incorporated many of those improvements into the helmet. So at a first glance, you might see new profile, new spoiler, more aggressive style of venting scheme with the chin spoiler. That is really 10% of what's different in this helmet. So much so that through the course of this video, I'm gonna break it into different sections. You can check out this menu, and if you wanna jump ahead to hear really any of the key features or differences, feel free to click through now. But really, what I'm gonna do is at a, at a high level, walk through the helmet, and then take a really deep, deep dive. Now, that being said, at any point, I'd love to hear your questions, your comments. Subscribe to us here on Revzilla TV and leave us your comments on our YouTube channel. Let's dive into what I think are gonna be some of the most key points. Now, we're gonna get into aerodynamics, we're gonna get into quiet. You need to know that they've shaved two decibels off this helmet. So what was 84 decibels is now 82 decibels. But again, there's a whole story behind that. The first thing I want to address was one of the things that we had the most difficulty with with, with the original C3, and that was fit and comfort. For many people that have a neutral head that are about an intermediate oval, I'm one of them, the C3 was a no-brainer on the fit. But there are a few things if your face started to get a little bit wider, if you were a little bit longer front to back, or if you had a little bit bigger of a neck, that you could run into some issues with the original C3 where people were talking about how over long rides, they may become less comfortable. Let's talk about the three ways in which Schubert has dramatically changed the C3 Pro. The first is going to be on the forehead area. So if you have a little bit more pronounced forehead or if you're a little bit longer front to back in your head shape, they have now taken the interior liner of the C3 Pro, which I'm going to open, and by, mi by a mixture of eliminating seams, adding padding, as well as heat welding the materials as they come together, you notice these cat ears here, similar style, very different construction. So you're adding room and you're adding padding to the forehead. So for those of you guys out there that said, you know what, the Schubert is just a little bit, it's gonna get a little bit tight in my forehead area, this should address that and you should have a much better chance to be able to do that. And I will say that you can take the C3 Pro liner and retrofit it to your C3 if you have that as well. So it's a welcomed addition. The other piece that people would talk about is they would talk about the neck roll. And they would talk about the close proximity of this ratcheting system. It's a speed ratchet, which we see a lot in Europe. Schubert uses it, and it makes it really easy for one hand you know, removal with a glove on. What they've done is they've actually managed to take the mounting points of the chin strap and move them forward. So you're now have, gonna have better clearance if you have a more pronounced Adam's apple. And you can see that I've removed my top vent here piece. I'm gonna get to that in a second, but it is removable, I'm gonna show you that. The other thing that they did, and I mentioned you know, that they have this removable chin, chin curtain here, which a lot of people have the misconception that it's only for winter riding. It actually creates a bit of calm with the wind that's going underneath of the helmet. So in a lot of senses, unless you need the extra room that you can see now has been cut out to accommodate someone with a larger neck, in a lot of senses, you're gonna most likely be riding with this chin curtain on. Keep that in mind, it is slightly adjustable. It's a new softer material. You can see it's this mesh material, but again, they've done this cutaway to accommodate gentlemen or ladies that have a little bit bigger neck when they're riding. And that's a great point. On, at, a, at a very high level, the C3 Pro is going to have you know, a few different colors. There's also going to be a C3 Pro ladies version of the helmet that's going to have some of the more ergonomic features within the way the cheek pads go, within the crown of the head, the way that the helmet's shaped for a lady specific head. But it brings us to another point on comfort and fit. Again, you're thinking around the crown. When we say intermediate, oval, neutral, oval, very ergonomic, we think about the way that it's supposed to fit you around the top of your head. The C3 Pro now has a secondary type of cheek pad that can be bought separately and used to modify the fit of the helmet. They call it the narrow cheek pad, and it's gonna be a separate purchase, but what it allows you to do is if you have a really wide facial structure, a wider face, wider cheekbones, you can now get the narrow cheek pads. You'd buy a medium helmet, 
and you'd buy the medium narrow cheek pads that allow you for more room on the interior. So again, staying in line with just comfort and fit, they've dramatically modified the helmet moving forward based on all of the feedback they've gotten in previous scenarios and from previous riders. So it goes without saying they've changed a lot on the fit of the helmet. And remember, we ship for free, exchange for free, no restocks if you need to send it back to us. So don't worry if you're making a huge investment in a helmet and you're buying it online, we'll try to make it painless. Now moving into the profile of the helmet, this is the thing that most jumps out at people. They've really changed the look and the style and they've added some external features to the C3 Pro. I'm gonna bring in my original C3. I'm gonna show you one of the key differences. The original 3C was really great as a positioned helmet for maybe a sport touring or a touring or a cruising rider. A lot of times guys would be wearing this helmet in the upright position and not really realizing that, that it could be optimized for the three quarter and could do really well. Big changes they've made in the C3 Pro, if you notice the profile, there's now a spoiler, not only in the back, and it's the same spoiler that we've seen on the outside of this composite shell in the S2. And remember, it's the strong fiber, it's fiberglass Dyneema, it's going to be a mixture of resins as well as Kevlar, and it's bag molded, but in a, a very proprietary process to get that strong shell from Schubert. You also have, down towards the front, you have now a spoiler along or this wing along the chin at the bottom and it really serves two purposes it adds to the downforce this helmet's going to have and the stability at high speed i believe they're testing the c3 pro at 240 kilometers per hour now it's they've gone kind of a level up on their speed testing so you're getting about eight percent increase in downforce but you now also have a helmet that's going to look much better in the tuck in the, in the three-quarter tuck position a helmet that's going to always do great in the upright for the touring riders but now in the more sport scenarios or even think about the matte black version which has been so popular on a naked bike or in the city you now have a helmet that's a little bit more stylish. The aerodynamic also plays a big part in the turbulence and the way the wind flows over the helmet when it comes to the fact that they've managed to shave two decibels off the quiet. They've done this in a number of ways. First is the aerodynamics, but then it's also the venting, the way that air comes into the Schubert C3 Pro helmet. You'll notice here at the top, our, our large vent has completely changed, and it's actually flowing nine liters of air versus seven liters of air per second into the helmet. So a dramatic increase in the flow of air, but really by changing the style of it, and what I'm gonna do here, and you saw me pull that piece off, I'm actually gonna pop this off and show you, it should pop right off, there we go. The key difference is here. So we pop our top vent off, and I'm gonna to get to this underneath in a sec, you're gonna see the bigger holes. What we have is the flow of air comes through, and you're gonna see from a quiet standpoint, we have these wings. The wings disrupt the airflow. They slightly slow it down going into the helmet, and what they do is they make sure the air stays quiet. And you also have this Y channel in the front that diverts the air down. Now, when it comes to the holes themselves, the way that this is laid out, this very smoothly moving mechanism, there are larger holes now that vent through the EPS to the head on the venting side of things. But again, they're all done and manufactured in a way that it comes together by not sacrificing any of the quiet of the helmet. Not only is road noise and external noise a factor when you talk about how quiet of a helmet you're using, as well as the EPS, as well as the padding on the inside, but really if you think about a lot of the air, or a lot of the noise that's generated from a helmet, it's generated by the helmet pushing air. So the aerodynamic signature, the vents on the helmet, the way the neck roll is, the way the helmet comes together and interfaces with your body really is going to either amplify or quiet down the noise of at 80 miles an hour pushing the air, cutting through the air. So let me see if I can put my top vent back on here. Snap this bad boy down, put my vent back on the top. You can see it's very easy to use with a glove. They've made it big. They've learned that lesson that guys ride these all year round and you're gonna have a potentially beefier glove. And let's look at some of the other venting properties. Now key changes for this year, if you look at last year's C3 versus the 33 Pro, the chin vent's gonna look very similar. But what it's actually doing, they've tuned the chin vent that now it's more on the shield. And you can see the way a shield's laid out. It's going to come pin lock ready with a pin lock vent lens in the box. But now the vent gets less away, it's less from your face, and it's much more on the shield of the helmet as it goes up. So as we look at the side profile of the shield too, as you kind of come up from the chin vent, you're gonna notice it's a very similar shield that we saw previously in the C3. And it kind of ties in with the outer shell. And a quick note, when you think about the comparison of the shells versus the C3, you're still around that three and a half pound mark. So there's no added weight to the helmet, although they've changed a lot of things. Keep that in mind. Moving into the shield, a few things that have changed, not around the shield itself, but in the way the shield interfaces with the helmet. This is a German brand. This is a Apex brand of super premium product. It's all about tolerances. We hear super premium brands talk about that all the time. Now we have a new gasket. 
new gasket's gonna create a better seal from both air and the weather that goes all the way around where the shield is going to meet the helmet itself. They've also improved the detents, and you can see the detail. We now have a Schuberth logo that's going to go on our shield mechanism here. The detents are a bit more strong, and their lower detent stops a little bit lower, so you have an easier time getting into the city position. And as you can see, just like on the C3, at the top of the shield, you have your turbulators, which break up the air, so it, the helmet does less work to cut through the air. Then underneath those, you can see these panels right here. As I rock the helmet back, those panels are actually going to be reflective, and they live right around your eyebrows. So again, it's a nice touch. And remember what I said, the helmet's going to come pin lock ready, but the nice part is you're making an investment with the pin lock lens that's in the box. And when you install it, like you, do have, like you have on my C3 over here, pin lock means that you're using physics to keep it fog free versus using a coating that may, may wear off over time. Now, if we move past that, let's move into the guts of the helmet. And really, the guts are a big, big discussion. As I bring my cheek, my chin bar up, and you're going to see how I did that. That's actually patented by Schubert. It's a single hand operation at the top here. And you see as I bring it down, you're going to see on the bottom, I push here and I rotate up. So there's no odd or funniness to that movement. It just delatches itself, and it's a spring loaded latch. And remember, this helmet's DOT and ECE certified. And you're going to have these posts down here along the bottom, and they're actually stainless steel. They're not plastic, so it's high quality in the way that it keeps together. But as you move it up and you move into the helmet, one of the nice things is you don't have to buy smoke shields for this helmet. Just like in the C3, we now have a drop visor system. And it's actually a polycarbonate shield versus the, versus the version in the C3, and it's not using an anti-fog coating. So they've done that because they wanted to make sure they ensured optical clarity moving forward, even if that anti-fog coating over time may start to wear off. And the, a the AS1067 standard, which is the highest safety standard, or actually it's the highest optical clarity standard, and that's really for um, UV, it's for optical clarity, it's an Australian standard. Schubert actually sought that standard out and said, we're gonna design a new style drop visor, and we wanna make sure we exceed whatever the highest rated optical clarity standard and protection standard is in the world. So you can see how that operates, and it's actually a wire design you can come in here really tightly where my finger is down here on the side, you're going to see that there are two notches, just like on the S2, and that's a little bit easier to find that mechanism when, when you're wearing a glove. You can see front on too how the profile of this helmet works. As we come straight on there, you're going to see that we have a little bit of a cutout here so you can wear eyeglasses with the helmet if you need it. But there's a lot going on on the interior of the helmet, and in my opinion, it's one of the areas where they made the most significant improvements moving from the C3 era into the C3 Pro era. So as we move the C3 Pro over, and again, looking at the bottom before I really start doing major surgery here, you're going to notice that again, it's a feature that they've really pioneered, which is how the helmet interfaces with your neck, with your Adam's apple in the front, the way that the chin curtain, as well as the chin strap come into play. Again, it's, it's eliminating excess turbulence. It's eliminating excess air into the helmet, which is going to contribute to that quiet factor. Now, as I start pulling things apart, you're going to notice there's a lot that's changed here. And as I do that, let's start on the outside. We now have 60% increase in this mesh panel in the rear. Now, while there's no rear extractor in the helmet, there's no external vent hole on the back, what you have is the air intakes, especially on the top, are going to channel those nine liters of air into the helmet, down the channel, and they actually are going to exhaust to the bottom of the neck roll here towards the back. They've increased the area of that soft padding. You notice that there's still a reflective area here in the back. It's passive safety. And then this material, which is actually has a slight grip to it, which is designed to hang onto your seat if you put it on the seat of your bike. Again, it's just one of those well thought out nuances. You'll notice that it encompasses not only the neck roll, but also the bottoms of the cheek pads as it integrates with the anti roll off system as you go into the chin bar. We already talked about how they've moved things around for more comfort, but remember, you still have this super plush material that it all is coming all the way down to the chin, the, the chin strap. And as I open up the C3 Pro, you're going to notice it's a completely new style plush interior. It's the latest version of Coolmax, and they're actually calling it Thermocool around the headband. So around the crown of your head, it uses a material part of the Coolmax family that actually stays cool to the touch. So we all know how comfortable it is when we flip to the cool side of the pillow. You're going to try, Schubert is trying to maximize that feeling by especially riding in warmer times of the year with airflow through the helmet. You're going to get that cooling sensation through the helmet. So also moving into the Coolmax, really the completely redesigned interior, they're using Polygene and inner power technologies. And until I really understood what that was, it was a new terminology for me as well. 
it ties in with the antibacterial, antimicrobial elements of the helmet. So again, those technologies together as really part of the integrated coating on the helmet, the pieces that touch your body, touch your face, touch your hair, they're gonna keep it fresher, longer, they're gonna allow it to hold up a little better, and they're gonna just have it feel nicer and allow it to dry out quicker. So again, there's a lot of things going on. The other thing I wanna call out before I start pulling cheek pads is they've changed the density on a lot of the material around the sides of the face. You know it's a dual density EPS liner that changes its thickness, that moves around with the contour of the helmet. And that's really the safety feature that absorbs so much of the impact if you go down. But when you talk about the comfort liner and you talk about the cheek pads, they're not as stiff as they were in the previous model C3. So they have a light memory quality to them, but really the feeling that we had when we had the C3 Pro on is that it still supports you, it still feels all-encompassing, and it's still snug in the way that it hangs onto your head, but you feel less pressure points. You feel, you feel the helmet a little bit less, but you know it's still covering you at all the key bases. And you can see how that all comes together. You can see it on the cheek pads and on the sides. Now another thing is I start to remove it, I'm gonna talk about it while I'm pulling it out. Let's do it this way. Schuberth uses is the only current helmet manufacturer that we work with that uses anti-roll-off technology. So I'm snapping out my cheek pads. I'm going to show you what they look like. The anti-roll-off technology are two straps that go right along the front that you put your head through. They go under your jawline. And you can see they connect here in the back, and it keeps the helmet from being pulled off the front of your head if you were to go down. Now, in, previous, in the previous Model C3, it, it was a little bit more difficult to start moving the cheek pads. On the new C3 Pro, you'll notice there's a zipper on the inside here that's covered, so you come in here tightly on my fingers, I'm zipping it down, and now I'm exposing where my chin strap comes through. I can get to it much more easily with my fingers, and again, we're not gonna speed this up or time lapse it, but we are gonna show you that there's a little bit of work to be done to pull the cheek pads out. Again, that's what you're getting with advanced technology. It comes with the territory. But now I have a much easier time removing that anti-roll-off system, snapping out my cheek pad, and they even connect the neck roll to it, which is a really nice touch in the back. And I'm going to pull my chin strap right through. should pop through the slot here. There we go. And now I've pulled my cheek pad out. And you can come in really tightly, and you see that very plush material, as well as the piece that's going to cover the ear canal as it would tie in. And this is a right size cheek pad. And remember, the narrow version of the cheek pad is going to allow you even more room, but still be similar materials. I pulled it out from the right, I want to kind of go in here and show you one other thing. And this gets to the increased ability for this helmet to communicate. They're now using the integrated dual band antenna. So this helmet will absolutely take an SRC system. And it's an SRC completely made for the C3 Pro. Notice the ear pocket that I'm showing you right now is completely adjustable versus being fixed in one spot. That was something that was a customer and a rider request, which they said, we want to be able to move around the speaker in the pocket so that we can tune it for where our ears fall. Again, well thought out. But if you think about the way the, C the SRC system integrates with the helmet, it now has a 31-inch antenna that moves through the EPS for FM signal, which is a standard length wire antenna. And then it uses a technology called Bluetooth bo Booster, which actually, when you tie it in, allows you to get 700 to 1,000 meters of range in pairing between riders, whereas before, it was around the $300 mark. So they addressed the range issue on the C3 Pro when you're using the SRC to basically get all the same features that you'd see from the latest generation of G4 system from Cardo, but now with an OEM fitment that won't detract from any of the quiet and the sound capabilities and a lot of the engineering that goes into the helmet. Now, if we look on this side as well, I could pull that cheek pad out in the, ver in the same exact manner. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the time, and I'm actually going to go right for the, for the comfort liner now. So I'm going to pull that last cheek pad here in the back. Oh, my my anti-roll-off system that's slightly connected still. Pull that down. And now I have the ability to pull out my comfort liner. And again, notice that I'm snapping across the front of the brow here. And by doing that, Schubert's given me the ability to not get in the way. Here we go. One more snap here. In the back. Pops right out. And you can see that here is the completely redesigned comfort liner of the helmet. And you can see these two little cat ears here. here here that are going to allow you to either flap them up or flap them down. But what you can do then is you can, for the colder times of the year, for the winter, you can shut off some of the airflow into the, the forehead area or into the crown of your head through the main vents. And if you pop up through the top here, what I'm going to show you is the EPS 
that is carved out. You can see the air channels that come in towards the front off the big scoop on the top of the helmet. And then as you rotate towards the back and come down, you see where those channels go. They, they exit to the EPS of the helmet and they go all the way down into the neck roll that I told you had that larger mesh area for better extraction. You can also see the wire that's taped in there. That is the pre-wiring for an SRC system that's built into the helmet. So again, that's the antenna that goes through the EPS with the Bluetooth booster that comes with every one of these C3 Pros. And that's a really nice, well thought out feature from Schubert that allows you to again, retain that OEM fitment. So I know that was a lot. There's a lot to cover here. There's a lot of improvements. The guts really have some of the subtle improvements that are gonna add to the longevity, the focus, and the safety factor of the helmet. But again, Schubert, in keeping with its promises, has really looked at the helmet and said 84 helmets is 84 de decibels is great, 82 decibels is even better. So the next iteration, for those of you that are hardcore Schubert fans, you probably wouldn't expect any less. And keep in mind, when it hits the states, we're gonna see gloss and matte black, we're gonna see silvers, whites, as well as the high-vis version absolutely available. And then the ladies C3 Pro W, or the C3 Pro Women's, there's a nice ruby red interior that still has that slightly different ergonomic face shape for a lady that'll have a little bit more of accommodating EPS for ponytails or, or different um, for a little bit more hair. And again, they do that to try to be catering to more gender-specific things for men and women riders. Now, if you have any questions, which you very, mel very well may when it gets into a lot of the tech nitty gritty of the C3 Pro, shoot our Gear Geeks line, see us at RevZilla.com or 877-792-9455. Remember, if you're concerned about fit, we ship for free, exchange for free, no restock fee if you need to send it back to us. So you can buy the Schuberth C3 Pro by clicking the link on this page or visiting RevZilla.com slash Schuberth. Thanks for tuning in. We hope you learned a ton. We certainly did and enjoyed having you. We'll see you next time on RevZilla TV.